Good evening to you, ladies and gentlemen, or if you're watching this or uh, listening to this and it's no longer the evening of May 6, 2019, then good day, greetings, whatever it is that I, uh, whatever greeting you'll take. I'm going to do a quick um, sound check here, if you'll forgive me, and just make sure that this is working. Or if you're watching Awesome, this. it's working. I apologize for the, the sound there. Um, okay, so I'm in a very strange mood today that's extremely difficult for me to explain. And there's a lot going on in my mind. And I'm just trying to catch my thoughts bit by bit here. So you must forgive me. Uh, but I just... It's really one of those evenings. It's been one of those days. And the first thing I want to talk about is um, this concept of independence. And I think along with independence, individuality. Um, independence. I'm just spelling it out on my lower third here to make sure that I have the right caption. Uh, you must forgive me in these early uh, video blogs as I am uh, shuffling out the kinks, as it were, as some folks might say, as I'm trying to just uh, piece together a sense of rhythm and uh, get this all to sort of work out as I think perhaps it could or should. Independence, individuality, these, these are things that really interest me. And um, I mean, I try not to feel cynical because I love community. That's the whole reason I'm doing this is in fact because I'm deeply, passionately in love with my sense of community. And what do I mean by sense of community? I mean, you know, all of us, the humanity at large. I love humanity at large. I mean, there are things that I consider disconcerting, um, but I consider those things to be um, matters of, I think, ignorance or mm, bad, you know, uh, misfortune, unfortunate things that happen. I know that uh, there are ideologies out there that uh, I consider irrational, that I just uh, don't think um, are the result of correct math and objectivity, and uh, there could be some dissonance there and disagreement and uh, conflict. Um, you know, I'm an agnostic. I say that I hope God exists, but I don't say I know that God exists. So. I'm the kind of person who, when you look at people who espouse their beliefs in God and they um, try to control you based on the beliefs in God that they possess um, or such things, I mean, those are things I consider really disconcerting that um, just being, a, that would be one example for you. Uh, my point being, even in this context where I can have vehement disagreements with people, uh, that doesn't mean that I don't wish the best uh, for humanity. Of course I do. Of course I do. The one who wouldn't is uh, suffering from belligerence, in my opinion. Either that or some kind of, well, I'm not going to psychoanalyze what I don't know how to psychoanalyze. So you'll forgive me if I've overstepped my boundaries. I told you earlier I was a perfectionist. No lie as I try to move forward with my thoughts here. Uh, so I'm talking about uh, this notion of independence and it sort of is coupled with near cynicism. Uh, 
And again, irony because I love community. So let me try to piece this out for you as I'm trying to piece it out with myself, right? I love humanity. I love community. I love good conversation. I love a uh, projection of positive future for each of us and understanding what we're all doing to move you know, towards uh, these uh, experiences of self-improvement and happiness, finding more happiness and you know, making good things happen, making money, staying healthy, uh, making dreams come true, as they say, making good policy, falling in love, having good friendships, uh, taking those dream vacations you want. I mean, all of these things, aspirations and such. I love being around and seeing, I, I love seeing people get to do those things and I love hearing about these things. And I, I want to just live in this world of um, you know, thriving people. Look, I'm not a utopian. I, I don't sit here and pretend to claim that um, everything is going to be so wonderful all the time. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, but what I'm saying is I believe in striving to live what uh, philosophers like to call the good life. And uh, you know, I want to be a part of that, of course. And I, um, I care about how each of you are doing. I may not get the opportunity to speak to each of you um, on a, you know, individual basis, but I care. I care about, you know, I, I've got that sort of, um, influence from various, uh, religions that espouse the importance of love. That's something that I believe very deeply in. So when I talk about this notion of independence, I'm not trying to tell you that I therefore mean detachment from my fellow people. That's not at all what I'm trying to say. Um, that being said, however, I feel very cynical or on the verge of cynicism when I contemplate like institutions and social conventions and conglomerations and things, you know? Um, on a, in a corporate sense, I feel on the verge of cynicism be with my desire to be independent. Um, intellectually, I feel a sort of degree of cynicism. Like, you know, I, I don't want to really be pinned to a particular ideology other than that I, I strive to be objective. Um, you know, I don't, I don't try to follow a crowd in any way, shape, or form. Um, I don't even try to follow the crowd that tries specifically not to follow the crowd, if that makes sense, if you want to get into a conversation about postmodernism, which we can do at some point in the near future. Um, and of course, politically. I strive to be very independent politically. Yeah, I'm a registered Democrat, and uh, I think that... The Republican Party is a disgrace. I think I can't find, um, in my research, one single Republican in Congress, uh, in the House of Representatives or the Senate, who, who seems uh, redeemable. And it hurts to say that because it's, it's a sad thing. Um, so, I mean, I do feel terribly cynical about the Republican Party, but... However, um, that doesn't mean that I bow down to the Democratic Party or any other political party. I don't want to feel that I owe myself to any group. And, um, you know, that's frustrating if you understand how politics works. And I don't just mean politics like political politics. But if you understand anything about, like, the workplace and you understand that we're just social creatures, then things just tend to be political, don't they? because there is a sort of um, people in a group begin to establish opinions and there tends to be like hierarchies of sorts. Um, 
no matter how uh, no matter how I think what's the word that I'm looking for egalitarian you strive to be I think you will always have personalities that are lean a little bit more towards the assertive and personalities that sort of are a little bit more passive and so when you have assertive personalities in a group of people and these assertive personalities are assessing um, their likes and dislikes of different people and asserting their desires to express their favoritism for these certain people uh, because it may lead to uh, this social entity um, going by values and ideologies and rules etc that uh, that the assertive uh, critics want I mean then that's you have to accept that that may just be the reality of things and you need to navigate through that um, so like when you know like I don't want to be an antisocial person I get that there are these just sort of like realities of being social and um, Right, but at the same time, you don't want to feel that you have to sacrifice your soul to um, get on well in a social circumstance. And I mean, that's something I always find like terribly frustrating. Um, you have to sort of censor yourself sometimes um, for you know what, for lack of better terms, is either diplomatic or political. Sometimes where. You, you're thinking something in the back of your mind and you want to say it and you don't know hey i've got a robo caller I, I didn't know that your cell phone could actually identify them i didn't know the cell phone this is a new cell phone i just got it um it's very neat that it can actually call this a robo caller um so i know that i am absolutely not going to answer it how wonderful i was damn i had this wonderful train of thought and I lost it um, I don't know what was it ouch um, right I mean I don't know I'm trying to think of a situation though like how much do I really censor myself really I'm really fortunate because I work at a college and we're supposed to be academic which means this was the whole, one of the things that attracted me so much about academia. Like the purpose is you're supposed to be objective and you're supposed to be a critical thinker. And so academics are supposed to have, in theory, conversations of critical thought. Not that non-academics don't, but the institution is supposed to be based on people who think strictly in terms of knowledge and you know whether you're administrating uh, that institution or teaching in that institution or doing both, right? Or supporting it in some way, shape, or form. Alas, even academia, you of course always want to think about what you say. Of course, there is a difference between censorship and dipl diplomacy. And I do argue to you that um, one can get by in life through diplomacy and not lose one's soul. Um, but I think that that's, um, that's a value of mine. It's really important and I'm, and I'm just thinking about it. And I'm thinking about, oh, but let's say academia in general, right? And I'm just thinking about, I don't know, like I have this lately this looming skepticism about academia that is um, making me very uncomfortable and so skepticism about skepticism about academia I like playing with these um, lower third captions here did I spell skepticism right yeah I do feel this awful sense of skepticism uh, notice I didn't say flat-out cynicism or pessimism but I do feel very skeptical about it 
I mean, let's just think about this for a second, okay? First of all, let me begin with this. I tend to revere academics. I tend to revere anyone who really values knowledge, uh, critical thought, and sharing it with the world, okay? So let's put that out there. Second, I totally appreciate the fact that, especially in certain, you know, I, I appreciate the fact that a world full of people who are only autodidacts would be a dangerous thing. Uh, I value the concept of school. I love the concept of school. I wish I had loved it more when I was a teenager. I wish I loved it more when I was in my 20s, but the fact is I do love it, okay? And I don't wish any negativity towards academics. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, that being said, they, the, and I'm not talking about professors, because professors don't necessarily make that much money, um, but these academic institutions have in their hands, you know, an, a bleep load, an F load of money. And so many of us are in debt trying to move through it. And look, I, I think investments are a good thing. I think that uh, borrowing and investing can be very valuable. But college debt is an intimidating thing. And um, when you throw into the mix, especially if you're not someone who doesn't have to work, right? So if you have to work and go to college, and you're concerned about things like your health care. You're concerned about things like what your future holds. You're concerned about your romantic life. You're concerned about finding your sense of purpose. You have all these sense of concerns, right? The degree of anxiety that would have to, I think, really stifle people. Uh, I mean, I've seen it. I'm I both as someone who has gone to college and worked at the same time, and as a tutor who's worked with students who do it. It's a stifling thing. And as you know, um, if in fact economy and finance is a more intense struggle, you're hungry uh, or um, you're extra anxious and you're in debt in other ways. Um, I mean, and you think about that sort of the, the, the psychological impediments that come with this endeavor to go and get your degree. And then you think of all of the money that it costs. And then you think about some professors, the intensity with which they try to throw all of this so-called knowledge at you and work you really hard. And you sort of thinking like, all for what? As you try to get through it, right? And you know, so, so I, I look at myself now with my bachelor's degree, contemplating um, moving forward with a master's degree. And you're talking about at least another $20,000 in debt, right? And like the question is, what will it enable me to do that I couldn't learn to do on my own at this point. And I start, especially when I think about graduate school, I start to feel terribly cynical. And it starts to make me feel, frankly, a bit cynical about these um, academic institutions because you just get so much money from people. These institutions just get so much freaking money and so much stress. And then you have these people, I won't name names or generalize or stereotype or anything, um, but you know, then there's like this sort of ego thing, like people begin to see themselves 
as exceptionally smart and they begin to treat this like some people with an exceptional amount of money might treat how that uh, somehow divides them from people with less money. Um, and I don't know, I, like you get to feel as if folks treat university like it's some kind of um, special club for a special group of people. And even your intellect is not enough to move you through. Rather, um, you have to appeal to subjective judges. And so much of your future is in their hands. Meanwhile, again, you're going into debt for it. I just like it. In the meantime, we've got this uh, world around us. And so, so there's a song that uh, I really relate to here that I, I want to talk to you about. It's totally worth it. Um, it's Bob Dylan's It's All Right, Ma. I'm Only Bleeding. I don't know if you know it. Um, I'm not going to play the whole song or anything. Because uh, I don't know how that is going to work with like the fair use thing. So I haven't figured out what the right way to integrate a song into this is yet. Um, but you know, some of these lyrics are just amazing and I relate to them as they have to do with um, independence. Um, so here we go, right? As some worn victory some downfall, private reasons, great or small, can be seen in the eyes of those that call to make all that should be killed to crawl, while others say don't hate nothing at all except hatred. Disillusioned words like bullets bark as human gods aim for their mark, made everything from guns that spark to flesh-colored Christs that glow in the dark. It's easy to see without looking too far that not much is really sacred. While preachers preach of evil fates, teachers teach that knowledge waits, can lead to hundred dollar plates. Goodness hides behind its gates. But even the President of the United States sometimes must have to stand naked. Dot, dot, dot. Uh, advertising signs that con you into thinking you're the one that can do what's never been done. That can win what's never been won. Meantime, life goes on all around you. That's the point. Meantime, life goes on all around you. And the irony is, because the title of this song is It's All Right, Ma, I'm Only Bleeding. I, I, I feel like part of this song actually reminds me of my mom. And all the things she always talks to me about um, practicality and um, getting along and doing so well in, in life outside of, um, like, you know, just keeping in mind that, you know, in the meantime, life goes on all around you. I do like that line, so I want to put that um, in quotes because it's such a good line. Um, so let's do. Meantime, life outside goes on all around you. Will they let me do that? Yes. That's a good line. You lose yourself, you reappear, and suddenly you find you got nothing to fear. Alone you stand with nobody near, when a trembling distant voice unclear startles your sleeping ears to hear that someone thinks they really found you. A question in your nerves is lit, yet you know there's no answer fit to satisfy, ensure you not to quit, to keep it in your mind and not forget that it's not he or she or them or it that you belong to. For them that must obey authority, 
that they do not respect in any degree, who despise their jobs, their destinies, speak jealously of them that are free, do what they do just to be nothing more than something they invest in. While the one who sings with his tongue on fire gargles in their rat race choir, bent out of shape from society's pliers, cares not to come up any higher, but rather get you down in the hole that he's in. Close quote. That was a block quote. I just did my first video vlog block quote. It feels cool. Imagine Dostoevsky if he'd video vlogged. And Allah, aha or Proust or something, and here's what you've got, I say. Um, but that line, meantime, life outside goes on all around you. So having then this conversation about independence, right? Getting so fixated on, I don't know, institutions and um, who you are and how you fit in and all of this. In the meantime, you know, there's just this world. I mean, literally, right? Meantime, life outside goes on all around you. So as I think of academia, that just comes to my mind because you could sit there and you can theorize. You can even do some good empirical research and you can detect a few things and learn a few things but at the end of the day, who can relate to it? Or to what extent is the rest of the world related to or even exposed to what the universities claim to learn, right? I mean, if you want to read academic research, you have to pay for it and it's expensive. And then you have to try to understand it. So who's out there to discern and understand and process these academic findings, right? The press, the media. And then you've got the media. And I mean, hey, I love my MSNBC. I have it on all day. I read my New York Times. I read my Wall Street. I don't read the Wall Street Journal. I'm boycotting the Wall Street Journal. I read my uh, Wa uh, uh, Washington Post. Forgive me. I uh, do all these things. Um, I mean, but they're the ones who are going to, right, process the academic research for the most place, right, for the most part that's out there, or you've got think tanks. And oh my God, problem with think tanks, really, I mean, they're ideological. It is what it is. Um, Cato Institute funded by, is it the Koch brothers? Um, so, and right, so then you get into this whole like sort of postmodern condition where you can't help but feel suspicious of who it is that's telling you this is the research that they've found. And you become suspicious of the money behind it. And then you've got a problem, don't you? Because on the one hand, you feel terribly cynical and suspicious and you're not sure that you can trust it, right? But on the other hand, on the other hand, if you're dogmatically cynical, then you're nihilist and you can't properly think or even gauge any kind of estimations about the world around you. So you've got to have some degree of confidence in this world of knowledge. This world of knowledge though, which is just not so terribly easy to access. I mean, thank God for the internet, right? And the fact that uh, we can Google a lot of things and search for a lot of things and research a lot of things on our own. And that brings us back to this point of, yes, independence. Independence. So this concept is on my mind very deeply. And I'm thinking about what it means to try and be an independent person 
in today's society. And I think that it's actually not, it, in some respects, is not very easy, actually. I find that the world is severely standardized. Um, and in an ironic way, I mean, tell me if you disagree with me. In fact, let's pose this question out there. Agree or disagree? Our world is over-standardized. Our world is over-standardized. Um, I do want to get your opinions on this, because maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I am allowed to be wrong. Uh, I've, I've been so paranoid for so long about being wrong that, you know, I feel like um, the main character in Dostoevsky's uh, Notes from Underground, and I almost just want to say, F it, and be wrong, just so that I can be wrong and not hate myself for being wrong. Of course, at the same time, I don't want to get caught up in being wrong. Oh, the irony, right? Oh, the irony. Um, but I do get this impression that the world we live in is over-standardized. Um, I'll give you a perfect example. Not going to name names um, here, but you know I applied to um, these creative writing MFA programs, right? And... I mean, I was told things by some people like, oh, but you haven't published a book yet. Oh, um, you know, how much training do you have academically in the world of poetry? And, and I'm just thinking, isn't art this realm of creativity where, in fact, there's supposed to be like this free thinking element uh, that you're supposed to sort of like be really outside the box and anyone who's trying to impose on you this tradition of what art's supposed to be. I mean, I just, um, I think it's, it's like you have to just check all of these boxes all the time and you're checking so many goddamn boxes all the time that you can't even think because you're so busy checking boxes. And again, the irony is I'm, I'm an objective guy. I'm a logical guy. I don't, I don't have problems with standards. I love st You can't think, you can't live well without standards. I don't have a problem with standards, but are we over standardized? And is that the whole point of like why someone like Trump is doing really well and why someone like Bernie Sanders, love him or hate him, might in fact be very successful because Bernie Sanders understands, I think, pretty well that we do live in an overstandardized world. Um, I mean, put another way, right? There's a sense of comfortable establishment elites, and it is what it is. I'm just trying to plug in my um, computer here, so forgive me. Um, And if you do have an opinion on this, by the way, I mean, I, I want I want it. Um, I'll be waiting to see if uh, you've got it to give. Um, but I mean, I just feel like we are overstandardized. And I, I feel like at the same time, again, the irony is even as we're super overstandardized, you've got different swaths of people projecting their independent, their own unique standards on you. And you're sort of like, well, then not only do I see all these standards, but I've got to pick which list of standards. I mean, have you tried Googling how you're supposed to write a resume? Who's the authority on that one? Right? And so, I mean, that makes me a little bit uncomfortable. As I think about that. As I think about this world that we're thrusted into. I feel that we're over-standardized. But, um, 
ironically. Um, I, I just think that also the world is changing in a really fascinating way. And the world is changing so intensely as we speak that it's changing the way I'm evaluating my future as a, uh, someone attempting to be a productive individual. And so that's what I want to talk about next. The world, the world is changing. As I just sort of changed my caption here. The world is changing. What's one of the biggest changes uh, that I've observed? I don't know how you get your television. I mean, when I was a kid, we had conventional cable. We had a cable box. And you had access to like, I don't know, X hundred cable channels if you paid for it. Um, and then at some point we started with this sling TV uh, on the one hand, streaming live basic cable and Netflix on the other hand saying F you to the networks and the basic cable channels and even the HBOs of the world. And we see that the platform for our entertainment is changing so much. Now, when I watch TV at night, my MSNBC, I watch it on YouTube at night or throughout the day on my YouTube TV. I mean, that's how much the world is changing. If you look at, right, the newspapers, how many people do you know actually read a physical newspaper anymore? I don't. I read... I read the digital newspapers every day, but I don't read a physical newspaper. Um, I tried to, but I just, I couldn't even keep up. I couldn't possibly have enough room for all of that paper. And I felt guilty just throwing it out. Um, so do I hoard it or do I throw it out and feel bad that I had to um, throw out that piece of uh, history? So my compromise is I print the articles that I want to hold on to or articles that I want to annotate. I mean, it's the same thing with magazines, right? Now you get these things digitally. What about books? Do you, you read an ebook on your cell phone or on your Kindle Fire, or do you read a physical book? How many of you take notes on your cell phone or on your laptop versus how many of you carry notebooks with you, right? The world is changing. I talked about this earlier too. Think about the, the implication that this is having on jobs. I got a little um, thing here. Uh, it's a message. My wife is on her way home. Yay. So I'm just going to text yay. Um, cool. Um, uh, but, uh, so I wanted to, um, wanted to develop this a little bit. So jobs, right? Think about coal and things relating to the world of energy, right? As we think about solar energy and we think about electric cars versus, again, coal, oil. Think about those um, factories uh, that have moved abroad. Think about all the things that are self that are that are automated now when you go to the store, and you can just scan your items uh, yourself as opposed to having a human being do them. The world is changing so much. And I mean, then, then you look at the political aspects of things, right? I mean, Trump shook this world. And I'm, I don't think he did it all by himself. I think he was part of the shake, right? But think about, truly, whether you're Republican or Democrat, you support Trump, uh, you're against Trump, or you can give a hoot less about Trump, right? Think about the symbol of his presidency, though, and what it says about change. 
all these changes. I mean, the guy it has called our greatest allies our enemies and kisses up to our enemies like Russia. Um, and the president has no sense of decorum, which all of our other presidents in modern history have had a sense of, you know, wanting to be classy and gentlemanly or ladylike. Uh, not that we've had a female president yet. We should. Kamala Harris, Elizabeth Warren, uh, Kirsten Gillibrand. Those are some of my favorites. Um, I mean, the the way that our president talks, uh, the open racism with which this president talks. Um, the way the president shut down the government, the way the president lies so pathologically, so constantly that it's like mind numbing. It's shaken the world. I mean, even how political the world is today versus how political it was pre-Trump. I don't know about you, but to me, things seem more political. I mean, that whole Roseanne show with the whole premise, right? The rebooted Roseanne show wasn't the whole premise political, you know, a sitcom that is uh, so deeply political. Um, it's crazy. It's crazy, I think. Um, and it just changes the way I think about how I think. It changes the way I think about how I should be productive and creative uh, and analyze things. It changes the way I think about literature and its place and how what the future of literature is. It makes me think about uh, the future of media and how um, video blogging will compete with the political talk show like Rachel Maddow or Glenn Beck, all these things. You know, I have a friend who does, uh, are you guys familiar with that social media platform, Twitch? I have a friend who says that he just, he streams, he video streams for no reason. And he just sort of, I don't know, plays video games or whatever, and people watch him. Never mind that someone, that's how someone spends their time. I'm not sure. I could spend my time that way. But uh, yeah, the world we live in. The world we live in has, is just changing so intensely. It's, it's really quite overwhelming. As, and, and as I think about, again, academia I've talked to you about, the money is so tight in academia. And yet you've got so many people with PhDs. We got more PhDs than we know what to do with in this country, right? The world is changing. Again, it seems that I've got to cite uh, Bob Dylan, right? The times they are a change, and I think that's how it goes. I'm not a great singer, and I actually believe that's the closest I've ever gotten to singing live. Um, or for almost anybody, but I did it. Uh, feel better about myself because of that I do. Perhaps. Um, but it's true. I, you know, as I, as I take a second to reflect on this miracle that is the live stream. What can be done with it? What good can be done with it? What kind of creativity could be done with it? Right? I don't necessarily have to write a letter to NBC and beg them to give me five seconds of their gracious time so that I might have a shot working for NBC, right? Or like the New York Times. All I have to do is ask you for a few minutes of your time. We are living in an era of tremendous democracy. 
And that's perhaps why we see this major revolt from the fascist men of the right. In, you know, your Donald Trump, your Vladimir Putin, Erdogan of Turkey, Poland. It almost happened in France. We live in a time of greater democracy. We live in a time where we are sharing more of the wealth. And people with a lot of money and power are losing their money and their power, and they're wigging out. And it's a sort of populist democratic revolution where things are more niche. Um, instead of having billionaires, perhaps they'll lose some of that wealth and it'll trickle down and we'll have more, you know, modest millionaires, hundred thousand heirs. Uh, as a result. Because now, you can make your own show with ManyCam, YouTube, and Facebook. And try to cultivate your personality and make something happen with it. Uh, that, that's a possibility. It's a possibility. It wouldn't have been possible 20 years ago, 30 years ago. The kind of revolution that we can, and kind of revolution that we're part of now, it's amazing. It's, it, it's just so amazing. And it makes me happy. This is the happiest I have been probably ever, with the exception of uh, cuddling with the wifey watching TV. This is about as happy as I've ever been. Content. Just talking to you. Not paranoid about my every word. Free thinking. Being honest. Believing it's possible. That in fact, it's even constructive. I do. I do think this. And it makes me very happy. It makes me very happy, ladies and gentlemen. And I hope you're happy today. And I don't mean that to sound like a hippie. Uh, I just mean, you know, Ayn Rand says that's what it's all about. And I know you may have your opinions on Ayn Rand when it comes to her politics and some of the things she said, but do we not have a right to seek our happiness? And so I began talking about in search of independence, supposedly a very American idea, um, what about happiness? Pursuit of happiness. Isn't that important too? And so I think for once in my life I've achieved the sort of eureka kind of happiness and it's great. And I think, I think this. If people are willing to listen to audio novels People are willing to watch their friends play video games. Then logically, right, someone out there perhaps could in fact stumble upon some interest in listening to me work out my thoughts and talk to the world, to humanity, to the universe, to people. Why not? And there's some additional, uh, there's there, there's some additionally really neat things here going on with this concept of the video blog that uh, is really amazing to me. It's like a time capsule. Hundreds of years from now, if digital records are preserved, then someone can say that is what a man and a human being looked like in 2019. That's where his mind was going, and I think that's amazing right what i would get what i would give to go into the mind of someone uh very thoughtful in the 19th century that's why i love my dostoevsky and my tolstoy and my proust and my walt whitman and the glory that what appeared to be the 19th century and nietzsche right schopenhauer despite their um 
several severe imperfections, of course. So I'm going to leave it at that for today. I want to thank you very much for taking the time to watch, listen, what have you. I want to encourage you to check out my video blog website, publiccomment.blog. That's public comment dot blog watch listen uh what are this what does some young people say whatevs right um i believe in the near future uh this material will be available also in podcast form uh, because I am knowledgeable of the fact that people like options. So I'll be looking at how to make this an option, something you can listen to while you're driving or uh, working on the exercise bike, taking a walk, or I don't know. So again, thank you. Check out my blog, publiccomment.blog. Um, vote Democrat in 2020. Keep your elected officials accountable. I know that there's something else I could say and should say, but I've forgotten. Fine, I'll say it in the future. Um, yeah. As some people say, laters, um, or as I like to say, keep it real. I'll talk to you later.